Okay. I have to say, I was not nervous coming up here until Shelby spoke. And when I, and she said she was nervous, and I thought, well, now I'm getting nervous. This is, like, really ridiculous. But I was telling someone at my table, I heard a long time ago, when you just start out speaking, you're always nervous. You have butterflies. It's just your heart's beating. Butterflies are going. But as you, the more you talk, you still have the butterflies. They just fly, you know, they fly in alignment, you know. <laughs> to just do that, but um, thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm glad they mentioned about the books, because you're all going to get a copy of the book. I know some of you have read the book already. Thank you very much. You know, it, it's, it's fun, right? It takes a lot of work to write a book. Don't ask me if it's worth it, please. please. But it does take a lot of work. Uh, but it's fun, and uh, ClassLink is a great supporter um, of mine, supporter of women. You can see they're here since the beginning, and they have great women who work for the company. So I just want to give them a big shout out for buying all the books for everybody here. All right, we're going to get started here. So this is the name of the book, and I know you're going to sip, and we're going to shop. So I'm going to really make this fast so we can get into the sipping and shopping. All right, um, do, you don't, I'm not gonna say a lot about me other than I've had a magical career. There's no doubt about it. And I started out in New Jersey as a special ed teacher. That's all the Jersey people here. I said, Jersey girl goes home to Asbury Park. Um, but I have had a terrific, and I've worked for great companies. I've worked for IBM, I've worked for Pearson, and I've worked for a lot of startup companies. I've worked for Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful at the, at the Learning Company. So I, I can't not say enough about all the wonderful. And I'm having a great retirement. I'm having a <laughs> terrific retirement. You know, I, somebody asked me, what is the best thing about retirement? And I'm on a lot of nonprofit boards. And I love it because I get to meet really interesting people that I had never met before. So I'm on a lot of STEM boards, I'm meeting scientists. I mean, it's really exciting. And I guess the best thing about my career is that I've been able to travel on every continent, and I have seven million miles in the air. So people are like, what did you do with all those points? Well, I'm like, Bree, I have a very big family who love to call Aunt Kathy. You know, now they have kids, so they're still calling Aunt Kathy for trips. But it's, uh, it's been great. So anyway, that's more than I was going to say. But I did, uh, my first book was Real Women, Real Leaders, which I'll tell you a little bit about that. Bobby Kershan, who is my uh, co-author, is a terrific woman. I don't know, many of you probably know her. She's done a lot of work in higher ed. And the reason she wanted to write this book is that she was really tired of doing a lot of research books. And they just, you know, she's written tons of books. But the, she really wanted to get something that people could be talking about. And this, she's done a lot of research on entrepreneurs. She ran the entrepreneurial program at University of Pennsylvania. And uh, she helped develop this uh, mindset survey I'm going to tell you about. But she's been terrific. We're very different, which is really interesting when you're writing a book together with someone like that. All right, so this is the, um, the name of the book, and it's a connection to purpose-driven work. And I know we talked about this yesterday. Ashley did a great job. All the presentations have been just fabulous. But Ashley did a great job talking about purpose-driven work. And everyone, all of us, that's why we're in this business of education, is that we, we really want to be part of the purpose-driven work. So the driving question is, how can we foster this mindset? And as you... As you look around and you heard all these talks, it's all around 21st century skills. It's all around, you know, entrepreneurial mindset. It's all around these things that women do really, really well. And someone said yesterday, it's the decade of the woman. I believe that. I believe it's all of these things are kind of coming together in the universe, that we're good communicators, we're good critical thinkers, we're good problem solvers. And we found that out as we talked to these entrepreneurial women. So the entrepreneurial mindset guided our approach. There is something called the entrepreneurial mindset. It's in the book. You'll be able to see it, and you'll be able to use it with your teams, and you'll be able to use it on yourself. Uh, we interviewed 29 women from all over the world, 
and we use the entrepreneurial mindset to see where they fit, you know, in the entrepreneur with the entrepreneurial mindset. So research and analysis is what it's all about. This is really data driven. We've had over 100,000 people take the entrepreneurial mindset. We've had um, colleges and universities are giving it. So this is something that is, I, I think you're really going to enjoy taking and learning about yourself. Like we said, this is me, you know. You're going to learn about yourself and know whether you have that entrepreneurial spirit or you don't. And you may not, and that's okay too. All right, so there is a difference between traits and skills. Traits we're born with, skills we can learn. I was on a podcast with Chris Deedy the other day, and he talked about dispositions. And he's doing a lot of work on dispositions, which I thought was kind of interesting. You know, are we predisposed to do some of these things? Uh, somebody said today, it was Lisa, where you fit in the family, where, what your, I'm a big woman of sun signs too. I'm a Virgo, Mar <laughs> Marilyn's a Virgo, Joanne's a Virgo. Put us all in the room, it's pretty interesting. But there's something to me, and I'm the oldest in the family. So I think there's a lot to be said about those kinds of things, and if that fits into that disposition, you know, the traits. But uh, there is a difference. I'm not going to read these all of them. I'm just going to have you look at these. Can you see these okay? Uh, I'll read them, and then you can look kind of underneath, and you'll be getting copies of this. So the seven traits are independence, preference for limited structure, nonconformity, risk acceptance, action orientation, passion, and a need to achieve. Now, Marilyn told me you had this little cheat sheet up here, but I can't see that far. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And then the seven skills, future focus, idea generation, execution, self-confidence, optimism, persistence, interpersonal sensitivity. You could spend a half hour on an hour on each of these traits. And I'm going to talk to you some of the findings that we found, but I'm not going to go over each one at a time. But take just a minute, somebody said 90 seconds before, take 90 seconds and look at this list and, and share at your table what you think is your most important trait and then what also is your most important skill. Okay? I'm going to give you 90 seconds. Do it. I don't have to worry about ending on time because I'm only we're sipping and shopping. <laughs> Okay, anybody want to shout out something about uh, traits or skills? What's a trait that someone at your table has? Just shout it out. Nonconformity, passion. Passion, you know, passion is really important because it's really hard to be an entrepreneur if you don't have the passion. I mean, some of these you'll go through and you'll look at these and go, I can see it in my team members. I can see the, the that's what I have. But passion is one. And when you read these stories, we've been talking a lot about stories today, you will read stories about some pretty impressive women, uh, like I said, from all over the world. And they, they share so much of this passion and optimism and being a nonconformist, and you, and you start reading the stories, which makes you think about yourself. You know, you think, well, okay, that's someone like me. You know, maybe I am more passionate than I think, or maybe, um, you know, I have some of these skills of uh, execution, self-confidence. Self-confidence is another one. Now, when I tell you our findings, we did find some, somebody asked me the other day, what did you find out that you didn't know? A lot, really found a lot. And again, I don't want to get into a lot of questions now, but when we talk later, I can tell you some very interesting things we found. And when you read these stories about people who have incredibly big jobs, you find out really what makes them tick, which has been kind of really fun. All right, anybody else want to say anything about traits or skills? Well, I, that's very good, and it can be learned. It can be learned. Yeah, I can tell a couple stories about that. You know, you don't think you have confidence, and then you start doing things, and it makes you feel stronger, like, of course I have confidence. I can get this done. Anybody else? 
Okay, so this is actually what the mindset profile looks like. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but a lot of people use these for teams, you know, to see where the team all fits, you know, on the, um, uh, with the traits and the skills. Okay, what we learned from the research. Okay, women are risk takers, but they're calculated risk takers. Where a lot of men are risk takers, but they don't, think what's going to happen at the end, you know, where I think women, women, women are more calculated with, I'm going to take this risk, you know, and I love it. All these great men are here, but you know, you'll learn something from this. <laughs> okay. In fact, Shelby mentioned this a little while ago. She said, women, women have high confidence, but experience imposter syndrome. So how many people in the room have experienced imposter syndrome? You know, it's nothing to be ashamed about. It's just that that's what we do. And, you know, and we don't have to have that kind of syndrome. I think we're kind of getting, yeah? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, because this is not innate, this is something that has been brought down on us, so it's a symptom of the brokenness that we're in as women in leaders and fields dominated by men. I just read the book, and it just completely was like... I'd love to read the book. See, you learn something every day. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah, but I, but I don't, but if, if men, women will admit to advanced posture uh, syndrome, men will not. They will not. I mean, that's just a, a fact. <laughs> and then women score higher on interpersonal sensitivity, empathy, which Ashley also talked about yesterday. I wanted you to know I was paying attention. Uh, which leads to better retention of teams and effective collaboration. Now, here's one you should know. This makes men very nervous. <laughs> women fire people better than men. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, the reason is, I mean, if you have to fire someone, we've all had to fire people. We've all had to fire people. You, you spend a lot of time thinking about it. You want to make the person feel good. In our industry, you want them to talk to you for the rest of their career. Uh, but you, you make it like, well, you just, you know, you've really got to work on you know, some of your skill, traits and skills. You've done a, you know, really tried on this job, but it's not the right job for you. You know, you should really, and I'll help you. I'll help you find another job. You know, women are so much more empathetic where a guy will say, we're reorganizing, you're out. <laughs> you know, and that's just the way it is. So I think the empathy, you know, it's so interesting because I used to be head of the Partnership for 21st Century Skills years ago, and we used to th talk about empathy. And it wasn't a word that a lot of people talked about. Now, everybody talks about em empathy. But again, women really are much more em empathetic. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. Women have a high need to achieve, but when asked to list their strength, they did not select this personality trait. Now, when we did the book, we interviewed each person for like an hour and a half. We, they, they took the, the mindset test. We interviewed them. We went through everything. And inevitably, they would have in their story, they had a need to achieve. Inevitably, they would say, I didn't say that. Well, well we have it on tape. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think you did. I'm not going to argue with you, but we actually have it on tape that you said that, which was kind of interesting that they're afraid to say that they have a need to achieve. And again, you'd never be talking to a guy who said, I'm really afraid to achieve. You know, it's, uh, it, that was just another interesting finding. 
Okay, the uh, female entrepreneurial mindset drives women's success in purpose-driven organizations. We've said that enough, and that's so true. Um, and they can, uh, again, these were taken more for, uh, from um, administrators, but they can run purpose-driven organizations. They can uh, develop their entrepreneurial mindset, uh, set themselves on a path to rise to the top. They know what traits they have, what skills they have, and they can do that. And when women with great mentors were more likely to rise to the top. We heard about mentoring. I'm going to get to mentoring again. But mentoring was something that every single woman at some level talked about. All right, tips to finding mentors. I think this is a really interesting one. People say, how do you find a mentor? Well, you can find them at home. You can find them at the workplace. You can find them standing around here, is don't be afraid to go up and ask someone. Someone else said that too. Don't be afraid to go ask somebody if they would be a mentor. It's a serious thing to be a mentor or a mentee. You know, you have to be able to trust people and you have to be able to take the good with the bad. You know, if you're being mentored and they say, I had a great male mentor at IBM. It was really hard. Every time I sat down with me, he didn't like something that I did. You know, I didn't do it right. And after a while, you think, okay, okay, I can learn this. But uh, I think people can have male mentors and female mentors. At, at Pearson, I was so fortunate to have a great um, female mentor. And I've had some great male mentors. Anybody think a mentor helped them get to where they are? I think coaching is different. Okay. And I think people need executive coaches or they need people to coach them. What I think is, is interesting, and this happened at Pearson when I left Pearson. Um, they had a big retirement party for me. It was the way everybody should go out in their job, right on the top. It was great. And I said, and I had a lot of women that worked for me. I have a lot of women friends, a lot of... Women people I know respected me, women respected me, but I said, standing just like this, I said, if anybody wants to call me, there's like 3,000 people in the room, anybody wants to call me, here's my email, here's my text, I'd be happy to talk to you. Nine young men came up to me, and not one woman. And it was such a telling thing. I didn't take it personally, like I said. I have a lot of great women friends. But I think women are so busy with other things, like the thought of having to call somebody else or get somebody else's advice, you know. Now, that was five years ago. I think things have changed, you know, from five years ago. But these guys were so interesting because they said, why would you want to call me? I think you're someone I need to talk to about my career. And I thought, well, women are kind of afraid to say that. It's just like that whole need to achieve. They're afraid to say they have a need to achieve. So for what it's worth, I thought that was interesting. This has been kind of a challenging one to talk about because what we did is the ethnicity thing is a little bit skewed only because we did talk to people from all over the world. So the black people we had were from Africa and the Hispanic people were from um, uh, South America and Asian. So we were really actually looking at the parts of the world that we were talking to people. And then the same with the region of work. You can see, uh, you know, where we, uh, but the, the issues were the same. So I thought that was very important. And then these are the type of organizations, corporate startup, nonprofit, ages. We had some young people. The sweet spot was like 40 to 49. It was really tough picking people. Because as we're looking, we think, oh, we have too many in this group, or we have too many old people, including myself. Uh, and we have too many, we don't have enough young people. So that was, it was really a challenge on making sure we had the right mix of people. And then these were like some of the resources we put together. We have a newsletter, and in the newsletter, 
Um, we, we try to list the podcasts we're doing because all these podcasts are really interesting. So we have books. I'll put that book in the newsletter. So we have, and you can go on our, our um, website and, and get, you know, you know, get a newsletter, you know, sign up to the newsletter. Um, and in the book, there is the um, entrepreneurial mindset. We have um, blog. Um, so I would just encourage you to, uh, to go ahead and do that. Uh, I just want to stop back just for a second when we're talking about um, some of the mentors. And I, I want to mention some of the women in the book. We have the head of Sesame Street. I mean, her story is unbelievable that how she got to where she is. We have, uh, I don't know, you know, school links. They're in our business. Katie, she's in our book. Um, Nepris. I mean, we have some very, very interesting uh, people. But mentoring thing, I did chapter nine, which is on mentoring. And I think we talked a little bit about that today, is how important family is. And one of the things that we, we found out, which was, again, another big surprise, was when I did the first book on real leaders, real women, real leaders, I asked all the women who in their family were the reason they were a leader. And they all said their fathers. In the entrepreneurial book, they all said their mothers. And to a T, we didn't, you know, we didn't really ask, you know, they didn't, we didn't try to set it up or anything. We're like, who in your family, yeah, who in your family really was, was the, the person that you're an entrepreneur because of them? All said their mothers. And why do you think? They worked outside the house, they raised the kids, they were in PTA, they were in the community. My mother could juggle anything. You know, now a couple of people said, well, it wasn't my mother. I said, well, there's probably, you know, I don't know how many millions of people in the world. I'm not sure everyone's mother is going to be that person. But, you know, the majority of people said their mothers. So for all the mothers in the room, something to think about as you're raising your kids. And, and also, the men love this book. You know, I, I, I kind of get a kick out of it because people say, well, you know, I have daughters. I want my daughters to read. I have a wife. I have a mother. You know, I have all these people. I want to read this book because I want to know what really makes women tick. So uh, I've, we've gotten great reviews from men, and uh, it, it's, been really, it's been really exciting. Okay, and that's it. That's it.